And um, so yeah, as you can see from the videos um, that we've put together, and sadly you missed um, the, the slide for the RT news that I'm sure we can easily send around. Um, so we got um, obviously national press coverage for the work that was in Birkenhead, and Councillor Julie McManus was here and on the day it was here playing pool with the kids and then getting dragged off to talk. But um, it was it Birkenhead has had you know massive focus over the summer for this. So Neo community itself, um, 287 children. 6,597 packed lunches, 5,000 breakfasts, 673 hot meals, 3 buffets, 30 play sessions, 17 art sessions, 150 people to call them as well. Social supermarket was open 24 times, 123 crisis hampers, 6 community fun days, 2 community gardens, 5 football matches and 52 free haircuts before the kids went back to school and that was 6 weeks. Um, so you can see that it was a very busy summer. Um, our volunteer team um, worked staggering 3,969 hours supporting the summer timetable, um, which uh, value added comes to a staggering 62,000 when you put it on the, the volunteer statistics. And without those community members and volunteers that come together, these staggering numbers, even with the funding and the support, it wouldn't happen. You just haven't got other people to do this work. Um, highlights for the children would have definitely included the trip to school as well with Gorky Road, with the primary school children and parents. Uh, our trip really showed what can be done coming together and how much fun can be gained from family trips, making proper holiday memories. It's not about saying that, you know, we, we have got a massive food insecurity and food poverty problem, but what we've really learned over the last few years, the importance is those holiday memories. And it can be a picnic in Birkenhead Park. It can, it, you know, it's not all about the big trips. But doing these trips as community groups coming together and as families from different areas coming together has really helped us see barriers breaking down um, in the areas and I'm happy to come to different areas. And also just we can share resources, share knowledge, and we've all got um, you know mass amounts of resources between us and experience, and it's really helped us all do the best we can this year because we've shared that. Um, we had an amazing summer festival um, at NEO, uh, which we were very proud to have the Department of Education attend and be able to showcase the work. And uh, we had a glittery music explosion in the middle of Rock Ferry with 200 attending. Um, the footfall within Beaconsfield each week is, is always growing and um, on average now we receive um, 530 visits a week to our social supermarket, kids club, lunch club, community camp, cafe, information advice and guidance, community garden club, clean up events and our boutique. Um, still to come, we're obviously quite a lot of the community groups are waiting for the In Bloom uh, Awards that you'll hear about now. Um, half ten, we've got lots of plans again to really come together. You know, the, the government put that funding in for summer, it's back to us to, to make it happen now and, and wait for them to look at it again next year. So um, there's a lot of, of emphasis on really working together and working together hard to make sure everyone is reached in the half term. Um, Halloween bonfire night and obviously um, the, the Christmas hampers um, will begin in the next couple of weeks um, so yeah we're definitely looking forward to working hard for our communities. Um, I'm going to give you some figures from Gorby Road now as well. Um, we had 470 children attend throughout the six weeks holiday. Uh, we made over 2,768 packed lunches. We made over 500 breakfasts. Uh, we've done 15 trips throughout the six weeks, two of them being residentials. Uh, we went down and supported a fun day that was down on Ilchester Park. Uh, we have our own fun day here, what you just saw on there, with over 500 people attending. So all in all, we gave out 700 hot dogs and burgers, which is <laughs> a lot. Uh, we've done 152 haircuts for the children to go back to school with. Uh, we had 26 days of activities actually outside of the centre, going to different um, theme parks, um, West Kirby, places like that. Uh, it was 2,880 staff hours. Um, the miles are mainly Luke um, was driving, is the equivalent of driving to Greece. He'd done 1,897 miles. Um, and volunteer hours were 1,082, uh, which gave a saving of 18,000 in what would have been an unachievable staff wage cost um, had it been just you know, on, on staffing and stuff and it allowed these activities to go ahead. Um, we've done 46 play sessions, which included art and craft, sports, 
using the facility outside, the five-a-side pitch, the play area, uh, various things like that. Um, so as you can see from the, the video, uh, we had a very successful summer providing all of our local children with activities, food and fun. Uh, we've engaged with more children ever this summer and it's all the teams worked exceptionally hard. Um, we've also linked up with NEO, uh, which we haven't done in previous years. Um, and the St James have sort of come on board now as well. So we're all working together to give all the children better you know, facilities and everything. The highlights of what the children are saying would definitely be uh, the trip to Gulliver as well that we've done as a joint one, uh, learning new skills at the Marine Lake, and just having lunch each day together and breakfast, just actually sitting down at the table and things. The footfall within our centre each week is also is always growing. And on average, we now receive over 450 visits a week using many of the activities that we have on offer, including a full-time play scheme, social supermarkets, community bingo, reptile club, Exercise and forgive me, I don't know what this class is called, but it's only just started. A lady comes in on these bouncy <laughs> shoes, so whoever's got a bouncy shoe class, whatever it is, uh, somewhere and much more with a lot more to come. Uh, we're going to have a community cafe set to open in the next few weeks, uh, leading into the October half term. We'll just have a, we'll have a full time table of activities, and then there's our famous Halloween night, which we're going to start in a couple of weeks. And then we'll begin work on our Christmas grotto, supporting um, many of the other local schools, community organisations, and all, all of our other Christmas activities. Uh, we've been approached to um, a grotto in the home at the top, another home up in Morton, uh, and there's another one I can't think, so we'll go and do that as well as putting our own grotto on. So that's it, we've had a very successful summer. Thank you very much. Can I, um, can I personally thank you all on behalf of the committee? Um, you can see just by that small video clips the excitement in the kids' faces and what would they be doing if you didn't do these sort of things? But I, I, I honestly say wholeheartedly it's absolutely exceptional what we've done and please, please keep up the good work. Um, on behalf of other you all. Thank you. And anything we can do to help you, we're here to help you as well. Okay. Yes. So thank you so much for being. Thank you. Yeah. The next item then is uh, Birkenhead in blue. George. This item is going to be presented by George and he's going to introduce uh, different projects as part of it. fantastic floral features to show how much they love Will and the places they live in. The efforts have been so successful that 31 of these amazing transformations have now been entered into the North West in Blue annual competition and that includes Neo and, 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 and uh, they touched on it before. The projects are great examples of communities and agencies putting in time and funds Work, working with schools and residents to improve their areas. Big Local on the Beachwood, the Probation Service, the Gensa Housing and Onward Housing based on the Beachwood, Tesco's, they're all making valuable contributions to projects along with residents and agencies. Schools, the environmental team and the constituency team. I think if we are honest, I think it's a constituency panel that sort of dro drove this thing and is making it a success it is. The project have been invited to attend the Northwest in Bloom Awards on the 1st and 2nd of November 
this year at the Southport Convention Centre. In Bloom projects have had a number of positive outcomes. They're making retail areas more inviting to encourage local economic growth, provides volunteering opportunities for people. Probation service and residents will also give time and resources to the project. It draws in external funds into Birkenhead and in many contributions from other sectors. It improves the environment through better landscaping, the probation and biffer cleanse areas, remove fly tipping and paint areas. It involves schools in teaching about recycling and growing plants. It supports numerous uh, rural environmental pledges and generally regarded as a success. It provides an excellent platform for partnership working and a support network for volunteer groups in different areas to exchange ideas. It provides a target to work towards, judging day, and an event to celebrate. The good work done at the awards ceremony in Southport, which I think and hope that we're all going to be very successful at. So what I'd like to do is, is just give a, a sample of um, some, some of the projects. And I'd like to ask Angela Murphy from Tomorrow's Women. Yeah. Can you give us a few words, Angela? Okay, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm Angela Murphy. I'm the Chief Executive of Tomorrow's Women, and I know a lot of you know about Tomorrow's Women, so I won't go into too much detail. But suffice to say, it's a, a, a charity for women over the age of 18, and it has a commitment to provide support and assistance to women who want to make positive lifestyle changes. So that's re ideally reducing incidence of female offending. Um, women attending tomorrow's women integrate to support and share skills and experiences within a safe woman environment, where over, over 180 <coughs> different agencies come and help formulate a timetable of activities and events and workshops so that we can deal with many of the complex issues some of the, our women have to deal with. A key and innovative feature is our relationship with the local provider of probation services and to serve justice who are lo located within Tomorrow's Women. So we currently have over 6,000 women registered with us and those women come to us through a myriad of pathways, so through GPs, police, um, social care, um, third sector agencies, but the best is women come to us because they've heard that we're good. So you, we have women coming up with their 18 year old daughters who say, oh, I want a different life. I want my daughter to have a different life to the one I've had. You know, so. so that's why we exist. We exist to support women. So we moved into um, St. Lawrence's old school building in Beckwith Street East um, in 2012. And there was a soft play area for the nursery children in the, in, because we're in the nursery part of the old building. It was in a terrible state of repair, you know, it was that sort of soft felt that had all been eaten up and the kids were all coming in and they were drinking and then they started burning equipment, the old wooden play equipment there. So it, it wasn't a nice environment. So the women got together and said we need to do something about this. We didn't want a play area because it's for women, adult women only. So um, we, we sought some funding, we got some funding from Rural Council but we got a chunk of money from a woman who had seen me giving the talk at the YMCA um, who used to run a, the Chester Women's Hostel that had ceased, it closed down, but we had some funds. So um, we got some money from them, which was fabulous. So we got all the women together and we said, how do we want to plan this garden out? And we drew a big plan and we worked with another charity called Fates for Change who came and helped us make the plan a reality, which is what we have done. So the area is now an additional learning space where women can gain qualifications in horticulture. It's also a place of solitude to collect thoughts while water, water in the garden, weeding, or just sitting and enjoying being part of this little oasis of Birkenhead. The garden belongs to the women, so we grow from seed in our polytunnel, we plant out in our deep um, planters, so it's accessible to everyone. Um, and you actually came and opened our garden, yeah, didn't yeah, you, Steve? Yeah. 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 
So um, I've got to say though, special thanks to Tomorrow's Women and Merseyside CLC Unpaid Work Project because the women on the Unpaid Work Project tend the garden all the time and they try and integrate all other women to have a go at learning, you know, what to do within the garden and it's a really, really happy learning environment. Um, I, I, just a little plug for the Unpaid Work Women. Um, is that they also look after the Cenotaph Quadrant at Hampton Square now and they're doing a really good job there. So um, when you do see these women out there with their orange jackets, you know, they're doing really good stuff, you know, and I think it's, it's, it's always nice to acknowledge them and acknowledge the work they are doing for our community as well. Um, so yeah, basically that's why we, um, we, we were nominated to put our garden forward, you know, and we were really, really proud, and most of all the women were proud. We get about 160 women a day coming into Tomorrow's Women. So there's a lot of women who can learn lots of skills, you know, from um, using the garden and then cooking within Tomorrow's Women, but there's goods that they've actually grown. So it's been a fabulous thing. I'm really, really proud to be going to South Pools. Um, last year we did enter in Bedner Park, you know, they have like it. Um, you could fruit and veg yeah, and well. we came second with our <laughs> carrot and uh, <laughs> third with a cucumber so we were really <laughs> chuffed, you know, so, but that shows you anyone can do it and anyone can learn. Okay, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And, uh, and now I'd like to ask John Booth from Oxton. Are you here John? John Booth. <laughs> Well, thank you for the invite, Joanne, and uh, thank you for um, so far. We started um, in Octon with uh, the hanging baskets, and initially we had four, 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 14 warm-matted baskets, and uh, an additional seven were provided by the World Water Council uh, on, on the lampposts. The ones on the lampposts were abandoned because of their uh, High side of vehicles, um, commercial vehicles, dislodged them because some of the lampposts were on the edge of the pavement on the roadside, so they got damaged, so they have to be abandoned. Um, we had a team of five volunteers with two reserves at the time who um, used barrels to um, water the baskets because uh, in the sun they need an awful lot of watering. 2008, the number of baskets had increased to take six, of which six were paid for by two of the village businesses. In 2009, the number of baskets had risen to 40. Some were provided by businesses themselves, but all were watered by a volunteer team, of which had risen to 16. In 2010, the display increased 42 baskets, fully funded by the society. It was necessary to supplement the volunteers with a paid seasonal job for students. During 2012 and 2013, this is where I come in, the task of watering the basket became increasingly difficult due to the scale of the operation um, with the barrels. And um, the people who were doing were getting older, so and there was no young people coming to please, carry on the work. So um, we devised the watering system scheme, which um, it's done automatically from um, five points in the village with um, timers, so it comes on twice a day automatically. And uh, so far, over four years have been great, and three years now we've um, been featuring <coughs> lots of bloom. Since um, 2015, we started using uh, dovecot nurseries in Bearson for the baskets, um, who have made a super job of uh, presenting the baskets. And um, this is how we've achieved our success with Oxen and Bloom. In 2016, we received three awards, uh, one of which was a silver cup. Um, in 2017, last year, we received four awards, which was quite amazing. <laughs> and uh, this year, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, we did, um, with George and um, Andy Burrell, try to uh, 
um, replicate the warping system and the capacitance and clock burst, but um, it wasn't a viable situation, so we had to go for um, um, that's the artificial <laughs> and um, hopefully next year we have to go with something. And also, I got um, dragged into doing some work in the Winnison, which I'll let Alison speak about when she comes up. Hey, I'll say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, could I ask Eve, open sure, is she here? Can I not come in And this is Wesley Gardens. Is that right? Eve? Yeah, sure is. Do you want to take it away? Right, so I'm Eve Openshaw. Um, I'm actually the founder of the Wesley Gardens. Eve doesn't want to be filmed. That's okay. It's, it, what, that, I was just told about item 4, this is item 5, you see. Yeah, well, I think if these are a question to be filmed, then I didn't know who she was. So. No, I don't think. I did actually say when I stood up. Okay. Yeah, but I didn't know you. So, John, can we just turn the camera around, please, so it's not. Thank you. Okay, you're all right. You just make sure it's targeted towards us in the corner. It's filming you and the two people. Hi, Hollywood Pro. Sorry. Okay. I don't know, me. Founded the Wazzy Gardens as well as the Home Road Community Association. Um, this project is quite close to my heart. I might get emotional because it's nearly killed me off. <laughs> Um, it was in 2017, um, I approached our local constituency um, about a rot spot area in West Orton Road. Yeah. I was having fights with the local council, with Liverpool Council to find out who actually owned the land. And it took about, what, about two and a half weeks? I think it was about that, wasn't it? About two and a half weeks, maybe, something like that. This is all you, Eve, not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in the end, we found out it was owned. Back then, it was Liverpool Housing Trust, which is on one's homes. I'm a tenant with them. Um, I work quite closely with Steve Garney. Um, we're a borough council, the police, the fire service, our local constituency, Neo, the Hive, amongst everybody else to try and support our local community. The reason why I started because a lot of people know about Westbourne Road. It was high on the crime rate. It was antisocial behaviour mm -hmm. issues there. But since August last year, we've reduced that as a community. Literally reduced it, and we've been praised for what we have done so far. Um, I think quite. Um, yeah. We've produced a garden. A safe haven for our community, not just our community, other communities. Um, it's about health and wellbeing, social skills, and also the older generation who used to cause the antisocial behaviour in the area has come part of us now, and they support us. And they've sat there and said, "You know what? It's amazing what we've achieved as a community. We've brought communities together. We've brought our neighbours. We can keep our front doors open now. We speak to our neighbours. It's ju it's just been amazing. But we got rented into Britain Bloom, is it? Yeah, Britain Bloom as a project in progress, and that was a great achievement. It was a quite an emotional experience. Um, but the Wazzy Gardens were not funded. I'll just let you all know, we're not a funded project, we are self-funded, we rely on donations, we upcycle things, we take stuff from skips, we're like little gypsies saving things, <laughs> I've even been to Neo, I've robbed stuff from Neo's place, oh, 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 well, borrowed, I'm not saying that, I it's on my discounting, <laughs> I am actually a Lisa girl, so you know. Um, but it was in August, this August, we've actually opened the Wesley Gardens. Um, and it's quite emotional, it's been emotional, but for me to get there, I've had to go on courses with Onward Homes. I've had to get qualifications. 
I've got I've never had none. My education was horrendous. I never went to school. Physically never went to school. But that was a big, big massive thing for me was to achieve. Um Brian will have me on this one. I work quite closely with Jigsaw yeah. on a project on yeah. the, the Beachwood and Valentine, is it? Yeah. So don't be taking all the uh, credit for that. I actually oh, done right. that. <laughs> I, 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 I've given headaches. <laughs> I've given Jean headaches. I've given everyone headaches because I was passionate about bringing all our communities together. I'm just happy that I've done something. And I also work as well quite closely with the veteran societies. So, any vets, they're always welcome at the garden. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sheila, uh, Sheila, you're going to give a few words on the woodlands. Yeah. In the absence of Mohammed from the Dean, I've been asked to say a few words about the woodlands. Um, a partnership was set up um, by the police with the council, the councillors and other agencies with the community after it was disclosed that ladies and children were suffering really severe racial abuse every time they left their homes, particularly around the area where Woodlands Park is in the centre of Birkenhead. Um, Councillor Cleary and Jean Stapleton particularly got um, loads of people telling the police as well as actually criminal offences that were recorded with the police. So we got a partnership together to come up with some ideas of how to tackle it. Now, um, Birkenhead in Bloom, along with other in Blooms, were doing all these fantastic projects and we thought, well, if we could do something little to start them off. So basically what they did was um, they got some funding from the Birkenhead constituency and some money from the YMCA. And working with Rural Environmental Network, and us all going up there with the children from Woodland School. In, in the Woodland School, the children were playing together nicely, but when it was coming out of school and they got back with the adults, it, you know, it was all separation, etc. So they came up with the idea as if they planted some flowers, planted some fruit, it would be a start for the, you know, them for the wider area. So um, a team of volunteers, including all the school children, including Pat and Jeannie and myself and the other local councillor and um, all went up there. Loads of police officers came as well and the children were absolutely thrilled to bits to see all those adults working with them, planting all these things. So it was a really good afternoon. Um, we didn't have a clue who was going to water them in the middle of this really hot summer. Um, so we begged the YMCA who kindly agreed to go up there and then when the neighbours saw it all starting to happen, they all kind of started talking and joining in. And then, um, then they said, well, what are we going to do? So all these nice planters were plant planted. Joe organised for the community um, probation team to come in and paint all the fences. So it's a real big effort by everybody involved. And then the police, with um, the Neo community, the Dean Centre, the Hive, um, Wirral Change, and Gorby Road Community Centre, amongst others, everybody pitched in and had a great fun day. The neighbours were amazed that it could all be organised in such a short time. So it gave a feel good factor. Um, the councillors have, have carried on talking to them all. Everybody's in conversation. And we hope it's improved it slightly. Um, and what are they going to do next? So this partnership is continuing to say what's going to do next. Um, the Birkenhead constituents give a little bit more funding and they both shed loads of daffodils. So they're going to go in and do kind of an autumn planting with a bit of luck. Um, with um, the other community groups across the board and everybody talking and supporting each other, it's, it's, it's doing well and it, it's, it's carrying on basically. So and it, it's nice because the Dean Centre and the other mosque who don't really let a lot of people in, everybody is starting to talk together and everybody's sort of getting enthused and you know, and, and you were talking about onwards, you know, they would they that scout one would over there and, and all of a sudden everybody's suddenly knowing each other and it's thanks to the Birkenhead constituency Giving those small pots of money for the people to work in partnership, the police and the council officers are already getting paid, but we're, we're all out there for the community, so we need to support them, not just with words, with actions, and I think all of these, and poor old Woodlands was a tiny little one, and they're hoping to get at least a certificate at the end of the in September, and then it'll move on to bigger things next year. Oh, yeah. Thank 
introduce you. Um, next we're going to invite um, Rob Barley, uh, Rich Barley Rich. from sorry, <laughs> Rich, Richard Barley from uh, who's the Environmental Services Manager, Onward Housing. Um, who actually been very good with Beachwood in, in what they've done. I wasn't here for the the, the, uh, the judging. Uh, I was actually away in the Caribbean on holiday, so I came back. <laughs> now I'm telling you why. And then I came back to Beechwood, and I saw that we had a palm tree and a boat uh, outside the shops, and I thought I was still in the Caribbean. So Onward did a really good job. So yeah, do you want to come and tell us the plan? <laughs> okay. Onward were do you want to in the in doing the raise. Can you wind in? <laughs> Onward are responsible for doing the, the raised beds on the Valentine estate and we've got plans for doing more. Yeah, thanks for having me. I didn't know I was coming here about an hour ago and uh, I had to do a quick PowerPoint presentation. It's not the best I've ever done. Guys, I'm uh, Rich Barley, I'm Environmental Services Manager for Onward Homes. Onward Homes used to be LHT, used to be Symphony Housing, um, used to be Jigsaws, you may remember it, um, but it's now Onwards, and I, I joined Onwards in January. Uh, I'm relatively new to it, I'm new to the, the Beachwood Estate, new to the world. We've got 55 estates across the North West, um, and we've only done one Britain in Bloom project this year, and that's on, on Beachwood. First of many, I hope. Uh, I was attracted to this one because there was a lot of interest already down there. People were, were doing things and making noises about improving the environment, which is what I'm tasked with. Uh, so I wanted to get involved. So I started going to the meetings and started to get some ideas together. Uh, quickly realised that I have to work across a few different areas of, of the council and um, the big local and, and to bring things together. So. We, we came up with an idea where we wanted to a boat. We were going to turn a boat on its side and fill it with flowers. Uh, that's actually council land on the left hand side, so we have to ask the council if we can take their land for the, for the project, which they helpfully agreed with it. And we put something in. There was a lot of areas, a lot of areas like the one on the left hand side on the estate that were just sort of neglected, but that's a key gateway for me. That's, that's the entrance in. And I wanted to do something there. And the easiest and the quickest, cheapest, most effective thing to do would be wildflowers. Which we did, and I don't know if you've, you're still driving past now, they're still going. Yeah. 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 They'll, they'll probably go right into the end of October, yeah. so you get a lot of bang for your buck. Um, Money wise, that's, what you're looking at there is a few hundred quid. You know, it's, not, it's not big bucks, and it's, it's just so easy to do. Again, little drop spots like that. Bit of wildflowers, it looks totally different, it brings it to life. We did actually paint these railings in the end. Yeah. Uh, the council didn't help us on this one because we had a sign in the middle of the verge and it said wildflower area, please uh, please keep out. And some, some work guy strimmed it all the way up to the sign, saw the sign and then made a quick exit. So we had half a bed of wildflowers on there, not a full bed, but it worked, you know, it was good. And it was good that, you know, it's a school run, so kids are walking up and down there with the mums going to school, and they're seeing the, the plants there, seeing the we'll put some in. So this is outside the shops. It, it, the, the flowers that we're using, uh, it's, a rain, it's called Rainbow Annual Mix. It's, it's actually from France. It's a really good mix in that it, it goes through different stages. So you get this early stage with poppies and cornflowers, and then it turns over into different plants. It's constant, constant colour all year. But you can see the difference it makes, and if you, you pull it into the shots, it puts a smile on your face. And take, and, and so really happy with that. 
What's it all about? If we're not just doing it because we like wildflowers, we're trying to start something, we're trying to start an environment group. So we want to, we want to hand over to tenants and get people engaged in this. There is support available, there is funding available, we are looking for projects, we want to do things on the estate, yeah, we recognise that it, as a landscape it needs some investment, it needs some enhancement, uh, but we don't want to do it on our own, we, we think if we turn up and spend a load of money on it, you know, it's not really going to be, there's not much point in that for us, we, we could do that anyway, what we want to do is get people involved and then hopefully when we do spend some money on it, it'll be appreciated and it'll, it'll be respected and people will, uh, people will be on board with it. So we've got, we've got an environment group starting, we've got new members coming in, we've actually got a landscape architect now that we've recruited that's uh, looking to help us so I can back out now and leave it to somebody else as a volunteer. Uh, and we've got a waiting list now for the raised bed site for the community, community growing area, so we're looking to put more community growing areas in. And there's, there's plenty of sites for us. The boat we, we nicked, um, borrowed, borrowed, yeah, off a beach. This, this, I'm not a local, so I don't know how it's pronounced, but <laughs> we had to drive about a mile and a half down the beach at low tide and then gently take it out without it collapsing. Uh, then we got it into a void garage and uh, we painted it up and we put it out. So that's just the stages of the project, really. Um, Quite a lot of sort of negativity as we were doing. A lot of people walked past saying, "You know, what are you planting for us now?" Insinuating that it would get nicked and people would rip it up. And I think in previous years, when people put things in planters, they've gone missing. But nothing's been touched. Touch wood. We had one tree gone missing. It came back pretty quickly. I think somebody got warned off. But it's all stayed there. It's all stayed there. And it, it seems as though we've put a bit in, and people are respecting that. And you know, they wanted to to. Uh, to see the area get better. We had the community involved, we had uh, the kids on a, a community day, I believe it was. They helped us plant the planters. Which is all good fun. That's it really. Well First many of <laughs> We had a conversation, considering putting some raised beds possibly in Fifth Avenue outside the little centre. Yeah, so it's been identified as a potential community growing area. So we could look at putting in some fencing and raised beds, yeah. Okay. It's just it's on the table to be discussed. It's not a definite. Right, okay. So from that and you can see what what on we done, you can see that they really did push the bows out. So if it follows it, would you like to we have got. Have you got it? No, I haven't got it. Okay. So I'll just go. Okay. Um, we'll circulate. There's a really good video that um, that shows the development of this project, which will circulate after the uh, meeting. Okay. So could you say this is Alison Bailey Smith from Williamson? Yep. Yeah. Um. So I'm part of the Williamson and Pride Friends, who are the charity that support the Williamson Art Gallery. A few years ago, the gallery was renovated and refurbished, and one space which had not been exposed before was revealed and it was a courtyard in the centre of the gallery, so basically the heart of the gallery. There were actually two, one was filled in and is now a store and the other one has become a space. Um, so the, the charity decided that actually it would be really good to become a garden uh, because a lot of what happens in the gallery um, happens within the exhibition space and actually we need a bit of a breakout space. And you need an extension of the cafe, you need somewhere where you can have wedding photos, all those sorts of things. So Jane Horton, who's our treasurer, she had said, I think we should go for it. So we started raising money, uh, we spoke to the council, the council put a little bit of money, quite a bit of money in to begin with. We then spoke to, I think we got funds from about eight different charities, so we started putting them all together, and we raised money from uh, the friends, so donations, and donations came through just giving, came through envelopes, they came when I turned 50, I said I don't want presents, can we have the money, and you know, it was all given gratefully, and gratefully received. Um, so, the council hired um, Ainsley Goldman as the overseeing sort of body to do it, and we brought in Land Instruction, so Land Instruction have worked on loads of award winning gardens for Chelsea and things like that, so they came in, 
and the whole time they were developing this garden, it didn't disturb what was happening in the gallery at all. They worked out a route to come through the back and everything. And a load of people, while this was all going on, a load of people didn't actually know that there was a garden mm. there. So we had a launch on uh, at the end of June, and we showed what was there to a lot of the funders. And now the public are starting to realise there's this great space there. And John helped, because uh, we had the little pocket money from you guys, and um, you helped put a watering system in, which has been brilliant. We've got a little team of volunteers that help maintain it. It's a very low maintenance garden. So in the middle, there's um, a stand of birch trees to give a nod to Birkenhead and the birches on the head of the headland, I think. Um, there's, um, it's fully accessible, so you can go down in a lift in a wheelchair and go right round the space. Um, you can take your coffee out from the cafe in there. We can use it for our under fives um, art classes and they, they go out there regularly and they love it. At the moment we've got a huge sculpture that is based on um, the colours of Oxton Road with all the diversity that we have there and that's made by a local sculptor and the kids love climbing on it and it's fine, that's absolutely fine. And there's videos of, of that sculpture um, online if you want to have a look. The next our next step is to try and get a little bit more money so that we can put lighting in there, so that we can use it at night. Um, there's also the potential to project um, from the staff rooms out onto the brick walls on the opposite side. So there's, there's lots of rooms for developing. So it might look like it's static and it's finished, but it's not really. It's just sort of the beginning. Uh, the sculptures that are there at the moment will go at the end of the biennial. We're part of the Liverpool Independence yeah. Biennial. That will go at the end of October, so if you want to see this amazing sculpture, you should go now. Um, but hopefully there will be more things that will change, so it will be a, like an outside exhibition space. And we are delighted that we are yet again in the Britain Blue um, contest. We did win a sort of entry level last year, and the year before I think we've, we got an entry level for going out. It's that work we did outside the gallery, so it's all part of the the gallery. Thank you, Alison. Well done. That's all the presentations now, don't they? Yeah. So I think what you can see from that, what people's involvement in In Bloom is having a massive impact on their lives, improving the quality of their lives. <coughs> so we've all got to support. And thank you for your presentations. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Um, <laughs> next item on the agenda then is the manager's report. Is it? Yep. Yes. Okay, Joe. Okay. What you? Um, I'm just going to highlight one area of the reports on page 31, and it's um, the clean up and action days that we've uh, taken place over the summer. Um, we've had quite a lot over this summer, and we've used 31 skips, and we've had around 17 tons of waste removed. And that, that's part of a, an overall project of um, cleanups where we've done 65 <coughs> so far, all of which have included the community payback team who've done a brilliant job of alleyway clearances. Um, they've got involved a lot more and back the working for Birkenhead constituency five days a week up until Christmas and they've been fantastic. Um, and I think most of the groups here have worked with them and seen the fantastic work they've done. So just want to thank them for that. Um, it's really great that Jonathan and Francis have come today because they can sort of tell us um, their perspective on the, the action days because Hardcore Street was one of a really positive action day. We won't go into it because it would be better coming from you, but I think it has made a big impact, hasn't it, on your street? Yeah, it has. Would you want to tell us a little bit more what went on and how it started? Um, basically, um, we've had, we've had a... a, a